So yeah, man, like I was saying, we, we before we even start camp, you know, the demons come out flocking early. Uh, you know, they come up, they come up, you know, as soon as they feel the spirit, they want to come and scoff, man. But uh, we wanted to get in on a lesson uh, talking about marriage. Because of course we living in a Babylonian society, all right, a Roman society. So people don't understand what what marriage is, uh, weddings, all those things, they need to be discussed. All right, so we're going to get Ezekiel 16 and 38. Ezekiel 16, verse 38. I will judge thee as women that break wedlock and shed blood are judged. Okay. Is there, is there more on that? Go ahead. And I will give thee blood and fury and, jealous, and jealousy. Okay. So I'm now looking in the, uh, in the blue letter. All right. So that word wedlock, you hear in society, what do you hear all the time? Oh, she's having sex out of wedlock. You hear that all the time, man. But people don't even know what it means, all right? You get on Google, you gotta understand it. Google don't have to answer to everything, man, all right? You gotta go deeper than that. You gotta go into the root of where these words came from, all right? So the word wedlock in the Hebrew is not up, all right? Which means to commit adultery, all right? Or idolatrous worship. That's what it means to, to, to break wedlock. So get that verse one more time, brother. Uh, Ezekiel 16, verse 38. Mm -hmm. And I will judge thee as women that break wedlock. Mm -hmm. So I will judge thee as women that break wedlock. So what that really is saying, I will judge thee as women that commit adultery. All right. So that's what that that's what that's what it means by uh, breaking wedlock. Okay. It means to be adulterous. It means to go and have sex uh, out of uh, when you're already dealing with the man. Okay. To commit adultery. That does not mean you have to have a ring on your finger in order to do so. Okay. Uh, that that so that's that's what wedlock is in the Bible, all right. And, but when you when you uh, we're gonna get an example of uh, how a wedding that took place. So we can go to Genesis, uh, the twenty fourth chapter. We're gonna give an example of uh, because in the Bible there are only uh, three examples of a wedding, all right. And we're gonna talk about them a little bit. Uh, get Genesis. To, what you looking for? Uh, I just wanted to I'm trying to find that pretty simple. Uh, Scripture here acts it says where our fathers committed not fornic fornication worth worship other gods. Uh, and we can, yeah, fornication too. It goes uh on, line in line with uh with with uh wedlock. Okay, so wedlock does not mean having sex with uh somebody uh before you're married. That's not what it means. It means committing adultery. I don't know if this uh Acts 15 and 29. Maybe oh. the uh, I didn't want to take too much time and you know slow things uh. down. I'm probably gonna have another line. Or 21 and 25. I mean they all kind of get the point, so you can read any one of them. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and read it so I can get the uh, blue letter on uh, on what fornication is. Yeah, yeah, just read one of it because we just the, the point is the fornication. As touching tw uh, Acts twenty one verse twenty five, as touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing save only that they keep themselves from the offer from the things offered to idols mm -hmm. and from blood and from mingle and from fornication all right so that word fornication all right so in this society they tell you to fornicate means to have sex without having a ring on your finger that's what they tell you all right but fornication in the greek is porneia all right it means an illicit sexual intercourse illicit all right, so an illicit sexual intercourse is not sex between a man and a woman. All right, and it goes on to say what 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 those illicit acts are: adultery. So a man uh, a man having sex with uh, other men's wives, or a woman having sex out of her marriage with her man. Uh, all right, homosexuality. All right, that's a uh, form of fornication because that's an illicit sexual act: a man having sex with a man, or a woman having sex with a woman. All right, lesbianism: a woman having sex with a woman. Intercourse with animals, bestiality, all right? These are all illicit forms of sex, okay? It says, or uh, the worship of idols, 
All right, so those are all forms of fornication. So people confuse the word fornication based on what Esau, the society, the Edomites have told you what fornication is, man. That's that's what, okay, see what you gotta understand is these churches tell you that so that you they can get more of your money, so they can frighten you into not doing what, the, what's not one of the first commandments, be fruitful and multiply, all right? So they tell you what fornication is so they can get you to come to any church, they can get you to spend all of that money for a wedding, they can get you to, uh, to give more tithes, this is a church fear tactic, man. When they're supposed to be fearing the Heavenly Father, man. Okay? And so now we're going to get uh, Genesis, the 24th chapter. Because we're going to get what, uh, what an example of a, of a marriage that happened in the Bible. 24, and you can start at... Uh, you can start at 61. Genesis 24, verse 61. And Rebecca arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rebecca and went his way. All right, so Rebecca is uh Rebecca is the, the daughter of uh Nahor. All right? Uh Rebecca is the daughter of Nahor. Isaac was looking for a, 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 a wife. Okay, so Abraham told Isaac, he said, Go into my brother's land to find you a wife of our own people. Okay, so Isaac went, Isaac's servant, uh, went to go uh, fetch a woman for Isaac. Okay, so continue on, brother. So this story is about Rebecca coming to meet Isaac. All right, go ahead. And Isaac came from the way of the well, Laha Roy, for he dwelt in the south country. Uh -huh. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. Uh -huh. And he lift up his eyes and saw and behold, the camels were coming. Right, so Isaac probably went out to pray to the Lord, man. You know, he's hearing about the things about his wife uh, coming. You know, he's probably, he's, he's sending up supplications to the Heavenly Father, all right? And then he says, he uh, behold, his camels were coming. So that, that was like an instant blessing. You know what I'm saying? He out there praying, hey, Lord, give my, my, uh, my new wife to be safe passage. You know what I mean? And so he says, the camels were coming. Go ahead. And Rebecca lift up her eyes. Mm -hmm. And when she saw Isaac, she lit it, she lighted off her camel. Right, see, that's how a woman is supposed to be when she see her man, man. Huh. She, she, hey, the camel is supposed to travel you along the way. She saw eyes and got off and start running, man. Huh. <laughs> start running towards her man. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's beauty right there, man. Huh. You know, but go ahead. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? Uh -huh. And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. Right, so she, she knew that she had to, uh, a, a proper woman, she wanted to adorn herself properly in modest apparel, you know? So she, 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 she and that's what a woman's supposed to do when a man is praying, prophesying, or being adorned for a, 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 a groom, all right? Uh, so they're supposed to cover themselves. There's a sense of humility, okay? Go ahead. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. Mm -hmm. And Isaac brought her into his, his mother Sarah's tent, tent uh -huh. and took Rebecca, and she became his wife. Read that. Read, read 67 one more time. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent uh -huh. and took Rebecca, and she became his wife. All right, so let me, uh, right uh -huh. there. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, oh. in, in the Hebrew, the word tent is bayat, which means house, huh. okay? So uh, he took her into his tent. It didn't say uh, they went to a fancy church, all right? It didn't say they had a big wedding ceremony, all right? It said he took her into his tent and she became his wife. What do you think happened in that tent? <laughs> they read books. <laughs> <laughs> they read books and they had a priest in there running down all the things they can and can't do. Uh, no, man, they had sex, all right? They had sex, man. So read that one more time, brother. Uh, and Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah, Sarah's tent, mm -hmm. and took Rebecca, and she became his wife. Right. So they had sex, and she became his wife, man. Huh. All right. So if you if you look throughout up and down the scriptures, man, that that wedding ceremony that the society has created, man, is not true according to the Bible, man. All right. But they do it in churches like that's the right way to go. Okay. But that's not, man. That is uh, Roman Catholicism and Babylonian paganism, man. All right. Continue, brother. And she became his wife, mm -hmm. and he loved her. Mm -hmm. And Isaac was comforted, comforted 
after her, after his mother's death. Right. So you see that? So it says, uh, and he loved her, man. Huh. All right. So that's another thing. You act like just because somebody don't go before a, a, a church and a whole lot of people see it, which means that the love ain't there, man. They say the more your wedding costs, the less there is love in it, man. All right? You know, so it says he loved her, man. They had sex and he loved that woman. All right? And she loved him. Okay? So uh, now that we know what wedlock is, we know what fornication is, we've seen an example of a marriage in the Bible, but we're going to get uh, Exodus 22 and uh, 16. You know, man, this society has it flip flop. They say they believe in the Heavenly Father. They say they believe in God and they want to get married the way God sees fit. But this is the way that God sees fit, man. All right, go ahead. Exodus 22, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And if a man entice a maid, mm -hmm. that is not betrothed. Right, so if a man entice a maid, all right, you know, so it's like, uh, you know, when you uh, see a chick you like, and you, it's right, you, you spin game. You know what I'm saying? If he entice her, man, you know, he putting his moves on her. All right, go ahead. And lie with her. Mm -hmm. Wait, well, start, start at the top, top again. The top. Yeah, and on. if a man entice a maid, uh -huh. that is not betrothed. That is not betrothed. So that means betrothed means to belong to another man. Go and ahead. lie with her. Uh -huh. And they and lie with her. All right. So if they lie together. That means they had sex. Okay. Go ahead. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. So when you say the word endow, which means uh, to give a dowry. All right? So uh, I continue on. I think it explains that, if I'm not mistaken. If her father mm -hmm. utterly refuse uh -huh. to give her unto him, yep. he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. That's right. So if a man, say for instance, you find a chick, man. You, you like her, you like how she look, you like yeah, you like everything about her, man. You done put your game on her, she like you, y'all had sex with her. But then you go and talk, so now you gotta uh, endow her, you gotta give a dowry, you gotta go talk to her father and see if the father, because, uh, the, uh, let's get, uh, it says in the scriptures that a woman is a possession, okay? Let me see if I can find that actually. You know, so, so the father basically is, uh, she's under her father's household, all right? And get it right. A woman possession. Okay, this uh Sirac. 36 and 24. So 36 and 24. You know, so so when typically when you have a woman, she's under her father's household, all right? So if she's under her father's household, when she uh, becomes, she cleaves onto another man, all right, what happens? She goes on to take on his last name. She goes to take on to be a part of his household now, all right? Go ahead. Sirach 36, verse 24. Mm -hmm. He that get it, they wife. Beginneth a, beginneth, beginneth a possession. That's right. So he that get it the wife, get it the possession, man. Okay? So if he can, that, that's why when you, know, you, you take a wife, she gets your last name. Okay? That's why that happens because she is now under, under that. It says the, uh, the Lord is the glory of man and the man is the glory of the woman. All right? So she, we, that's getting a possession. Okay? Uh, let me see if I can find this other scripture real quick. Uh, give me Genesis 2 and 23, brother. Start at 22, actually. 2 and 22. Hold on. What is it? Genesis 2 and 22? Genesis 2 and 22. You know, so when that man get into position, that, that, that's, uh, that's his form of marriage. That's, that's the marriage. Genesis 2, verse 22. All right, so this is Adam and Eve. And the rib which the Lord Yahweh had taken from man uh -huh. made he a woman and brought her unto the man. That's right. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone uh -huh. and flesh of my flesh. Right. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Of right. Man. Right. Continue. Therefore, uh, and Adam. No, that's right. 24. 24. So, so like it. Therefore shall a man leave 
his father mm -hmm. and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Right. And they shall be one flesh. Right. So how do you become one flesh with somebody, man? All the you know, ha ha having having sex with that woman, making her one flesh. Huh. You know, that's what that's how that's why they say that, man. Huh. All right. Because when you cleave onto each other, y'all become one flesh. All right. You get married and have a child. So, uh, so, so, with that understanding, with, 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 with that understanding, you have to know that. So, uh, matter of fact, I, and I got an article that I had looked up because it goes into. Uh, oh, go ahead, guy. brother. Um, I wanted to get this this verse right here just go, in case. Go ahead, brother. Uh, people wanted to uh, uh, refute that and say uh, how the woman came from the man. Yes, the woman came from the man, but the Most High made us both in the beginning. This is uh, Genesis chapter 5, verse 2. Male and female created he them and blessed them mm -hmm. and called their name Adam mm -hmm. in the day when they were created. Right, so he said called their name Adam. So, uh, you know, actually, uh, it was a, a woman of his own people. Con. All right, that's where uh, Adam and Eve, that's where Eve comes from because Con. there were, it said made he them. Con. There were Adam, the, the Adamites. Con. All right, there were a group of the, the sons of God, the sons of men were all there at that time. Con. All right, so he, he, grabbed, he got a woman of his own people. All right, because if he was technically, if she was technically his rib, then he wouldn't have made that quote and said, uh, uh, 23, it says, uh, well, 2 and 23, it says, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Because he said, this is now, after he uh, came into it, I guess. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. You know, so, and, they said, and she shall be his wife. Cunt. You know? <laughs> so she was always there. Mm -hmm. They just did, he didn't, she didn't become bone of, uh, bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh until, until they, they consummated him. Him the marriage. Cunt. Cunt. You know? Just Cunt. so we can make that, you know, set that clear. Right. And, uh, okay, so I got an article. This is uh, the myth. The Mennonite.org. All right, so this is I, I, through the spirit. I think he's an Edomite, but it says, "Where are marriage ceremonies in the Bible?" It says, "I have often been puzzled by something missing from the Bible: marriage ceremonies." Okay. It says, "Although lots of people are married in the Bible, there are no descriptions of any ceremonies. Adam and Eve are married simply by the fact they are they are made for each other and they procreate." All right. <laughs> so that, that right there, that's letting you know what marriage is. Okay, um, let me go down because it was one part that I wanted to get in, in particular. It says, uh, the reason why there are no marriage ceremonies in the Bible is because marriage did not involve a ceremony. Marriage in the Bible simply consists of a man and a woman with the consent of the woman's father or guardian living together and attempting procreation. All right? No vows, no priests, no ritual, no prayer, no pronouncement, no license, no registration. All right, and it says this is quite different from how we define and enact marriage today. Today, for a marriage to be quote unquote real, it must be legal. In other words, it must be recognized by the laws of the state and registered with the state. All right, so this lets you know that these people created something that they wanted to. This is not of the Bible. This is not of the Heavenly Father. See, naturally, uh, when a woman has sex with a man, she, natu she naturally uh, there's a there's a, a bond that's created. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of women, after they have sex with a, with some, with, with a man, mm -hmm. those women who hasn't who hasn't uh, took hoarding hoarding to another level, they usually are clingy clingy to that man. Right. You know. Right. And and, kind of, and see, the, the the thing is, we're in a society, so uh, every kind of marriage or so-called sex isn't going to be clear cut like it was in olden times. All right. So nowadays, you know, they're going to be people. Uh, now that's why we have to ask a woman, does she have a man? Huh. All right, because there are going to be women out here who have children. Huh. You know what I'm saying? But that's why we need the grace of our Lord upon us, man. Who the word England calls Jesus Christ? Because if it was if it was up to uh, straight following the law, we a lot of us would be going off. You know what I'm saying? We'd be dead, man. You know. But that's why because it's uh, um, technically a man has to die for us to uh, take a woman. All right. But now, since the Lord knows we living in this society, you know, women running rampant, uh, all kinds of things are happening in the household. We got if we if we ask a woman, does she have a man? And she says, no, you're allowed to be, be with that woman. All right. But if she if she if she's not if she belongs to another man, then you got a problem. You know, and sometimes a woman is wicked, man, because we've heard plenty of stories of men 
still having sex with their baby mamas, man, while that man, while that woman is with another man. Right. And that's how it's a lot of confusion. Yeah, here. right. That, see, that's not if, if that woman's no longer with that man huh. uh, that she had the child with, she shouldn't be having sex with him no huh. more. She's supposed to be with the new man that she's with. And that's why the Most High said it was, it was important that we reconcile with our, with, with the, the wife should reconcile with her husband. Mm hmm Exactly. And uh, it's going off, man. Huh. It's going off. And uh, it, it's more on this article, but I ain't gonna get all of it. But basically, he goes in uh, talking about how all of that's uh, it's a problem. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's not right. And so it also talks this other article from uh, I'm gonna just this is from Jesus-Messiah.com. It talks about uh, marriage rings and things like that. Cause they try to say the fourth, the reason why people wear a marriage ring is because the fourth, they tried to say the fourth finger has a vein in it that's connected uh, to the heart, man. which is folly. That's yeah. not true. Yeah, they bring in all You know what I'm saying? That's crap, man. If, if that was the case, when people get their hand cut off, they would die. Right. <laughs> you know, that's not true, man. That's crap. All right. It says, uh, let me see. It says, the to give a pagan superstitious symbol a Christian meaning leads to a perversion of the right ways of God. The fourth, I ain't here. The fourth, what she say? She said uh, something about racism. Yeah, that's racism. I ain't here. Uh, the fourth finger does not contain a special nerve to the heart. It is superstitious to believe if a person removes the wedding ring, the evil will befall the marriage. Did a ring join them together or was it God? When a ring is made to join two people, God is cast out and replaced by a piece of jewelry. This is exactly what has happened with the use of a wedding ring. Superstition is believed, and this is borderline witchcraft. All right? <laughs> That's borderline witchcraft, man. All right? So if it's borderline witchcraft, it says uh, re uh, rebellion is, is the sin of witchcraft. So who are you rebelling against? You're rebelling against the Heavenly Father, man. Okay? You know, uh, of course, it's, uh, even brothers in the truth, you know, got wedding rings on. We still in captivity. So, you know, a brother ain't getting knocked for having on the wedding ring. But you got to know the origins of it. You can't put your faith in that. You can't be like, oh, if I, you know, if I leave my wedding ring, you know, I'm going to get in trouble. Well, you you know, know, for for the brothers out there, man, look, if you're with a woman and, you know, there's some women who pressure you, you know, to get married or to get married or whatever. If you, go, if you happen to take that route, be smart about it. Just go to the courthouse and get uh, a marriage license or uh, whatever. That's cheaper, man. Don't waste your life sa life savings on a on a one day event. Bro, that shit is expensive, man. man super expensive, man. You For wasting one day, one, bro. Man. God. It's, it's 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 temporary uh nonsense, man. Bro. You know, you, this is the thing, man. You rather have love for a lifetime Come. or excitement for a day. Come. You know what I'm saying? It's not about uh, you know, like like the brother said. If you go, if you you know, if you getting that pressure, we understand. If you want to keep on holding on to your wife, you got a good one. We understand. You know, go to the courthouse and have it done like that. Right. But don't be sitting. You know, honestly, we're not even supposed to make uh, agreements with uh, Esau at all. But we, the Lord is understanding. You know, that's just grace and mercy again. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna lose a, you know, hey, at the end of the day, the Lord said we're gonna forsake wives too. You know, so, so if, the thing is. As long as she not putting her or you uh, before the truth, that's what it comes down. If you put the truth first, and your woman like, hey, I still want to get married, and you see yourself dwelling peaceably with her, and you know, go ahead and, and do what you got to do, man. You know, but the Lord ultimately, if you can avoid it, He said, Lord said, don't take a wife, man. You know, in in this place, you know. But sometimes, sometimes the girls could be decent women, and sometimes they might not pressure you, is because their parents are pressuring her. You know, huh. to put the pressure on you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you are happy with the, I guess, you know what I'm saying? Hey, make the smart move and don't make the dumb move. All right, man, that, that wedding ceremony is foolishness, it man. It is, man. And it, it, it's absent, real talk, it's absent of love, man. It's like a, it's like a, especially now, since this social media wave, it's all it is is a big show, man, to try to, you know, the thing is, if you show somebody you truly love them, you don't have to do it by a one-day celebration, man. You're going to do it every day of your life. You're going to tell them that you love them every day. You're going to make sure they're taken care of. You're going to make sure if, if they, if you're going to uh, take care of them the best of, they, uh, best of your ability. That's what true love is, man. Bro, the cost of the wedding ring, the, the, the church, the rehearse, the, uh, the <laughs> reception area, the, the, the limos, the tuxedos. Bro, you easily in uh, the 20 grand. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, for a small way. If, if you just got married, if you just have sex mm -hmm. and you uh, just... Go buy a couple cars and go on a little 
cruise. You know what I'm saying? Like, spend that 20 grand, you know, wisely. That's right, man. You know, it, it's so much more that you can do for the, it, it's a hey, real talk, it's societal robbery, man. You know, hold on, I'm gonna restart this.